Welcome back my crafty friends to another Mixed Media Tuesday. Today I'm going to create a double page on my stone paper journal and uh, for today I decided to start with rice paper. Rice paper is perfect when you don't know how to start and you just want to have a background ready to go. So this is a lovely design. I'm going to show you from which collection it is. This is the Sweet Winter collection, one of the Christmas collections by Stamperia. And I'm going to browse through the pad quickly. Uh, you will find lots of focal points to use on an art journal, like this skater, for example. And I had too much light here. Hope you can see the designs better now. She definitely goes in one of my future art journal pages. Here is a line of houses. I did use it on my mini journal, as well as the, look at this scene. So adorable with the cat and the dog. So many different elements that you can find in this pad. So here is my focal point for today, what I'm going to cut out and the background is the exact same design as the rice paper, so you can use this one if you like. So here are the rest of the pages, I'm browsing through them quickly so you can see all the different designs. And you can see this is a winter themed pad, it's not a Christmas one, although you can use it for it if you like. Absolutely love the pinks and blues in this color combination. And I'm going to stick down my rice paper. For that I'm using mixed media glue. I apply a good layer first on the page and then I will stick down the rice paper and cover it on top with mixed media glue as well. This will ensure that I get a good bonding. If you end up with some wrinkles, don't freak out. They are always on our advantage if you are working on a mixed media project. A little bit of texture at the background is never an issue. It's always an advantage. Once you make sure that this is completely dry, you can go ahead and use your scissors to cut off the excess or you can use a file like I'm doing here. Now let's work on the background for a little bit. Uh, the design is quite subtle, however, I want to push it further in the background to make it fade out a little bit more. So one of my favorite techniques to do that is to, do, to use a brayer and I apply a little bit of white paint all over the background. This is making sure that it's not going to cover up the background, I can still see the beautiful design, but at the same time it uh, fades out. You can go heavier on some areas to turn them completely white and leave others so you get a beautiful effect this way. Another way to get similar results is to use a spatula instead of a brayer and I'm going to show it to you now. This way you apply way more paint with uh, your spatula and you will end up with more coverage. It really depends on what the look that you are going for. Any technique really works. You can even use your brush if you want to see brush strokes. Now let's throw in a second color, this time I'm going with a pale pink color. Again I'm going to use the exact same technique with my brayer and go over some of the areas. My focal points will have pink, so I need to have a touch of pink at the background to bring everything together. And that's what happens when you craft with a cat next to you all the time, he has no respect for my art at all. Plus I had to clean up his paws since he went over the acrylic paint. Anyway, I did apply some extra pink here and I'm going to add some splatters as well. And now let's play with the border. I usually go and create a darker border than my page, but this time since I'm going for a winter scene, I am uh, going to use modeling paste, volume paste in this case, and apply a border all around with my spatula. I'm not trying to make it perfect, I'm trying to make it imperfect to be honest. This makes it really easy to create this type of border and it's going to have a huge impact on a winter scene. Now also keep in mind that you can make the border as thick as you like depending on the amount of paste that you apply. However, I try to apply quite thin layer so that it's going to dry quickly and I don't have to wait for ages for it to dry before I move on to the next steps. So I left this aside for the border to dry for a while and in the meantime I can go ahead and do the fuzzy cutting. So first of all I need to cut out the skates and uh, for that I'm using my trusty uh, scissors. I'm going to go all around them and I'm even going to cut out the areas in between the blades. 
When you fuzzy cut your images from a pattern paper, don't be too worried about fuzzy cutting exactly what you see there. You don't have to cut out every little flower and every little uh, leaf that uh, comes together in this flower composition. Remember, nobody knew what was there before they see it cut out. So there are no mistakes and you don't have to make your life difficult. Also another option is to use ephemera if you don't like fuzzy cutting. There are uh, options for you or you can even use the die cuts which are made out of chipboard and they are a little bit thicker. You will find different designs that you can play with instead of fuzzy cutting from the main pads. Now I am looking for a flower to complete my flower composition at the top of my skates and I want to find something quite big and vibrant so I decided to go with this one I think that it's going to give a lovely touch of color and then I wanted some extra leaves so I used some dyes from my stash and I used pattern paper from the same pad to cut out a few leaves so they match lovely with the rest of the design this is the paper pad that I used for cutting out the leaves it's the background one from the same collection and that's the paper that I used Now since I'm going for a winter scene, instead of inking up the edges with brown, which is something that I usually do, this time I'm going to ink up the edges with uh, acrylic paint in white. So I'm going to use a spongy brush and I'm going to use my acrylic paint and go all around my elements with this one, just dabbing, which is going to give a look and feel as if there is snow on all the elements. By doing that on everything, you bring all the elements together because they will have the same look and feel. Just go all around, a dab, dab, dab. It doesn't have to be perfect, just a little bit will do. And I will do that on the leaves as well. And it's finally time to put together my composition. I'm going to put on some music and catch you back once I glue everything down. Here is a close-up of how the project looks at the moment. Now it is pretty much finished, I need to add my quote and some finishing touches. So let's do that. First I'm going to show you how you can add shading and help those boots pop even more. This is not something that you have to do but it's a good technique to have in hand if you find that the focal points do not pop against the background. So all I do is to just swipe a little bit on my glass mat. Remember this works as a watercolor. Dilute it with water and just go ahead and add your shadows. Just because I did apply lots of paint at the background, this doesn't absorb the ink instantly. So I'm able to smudge it with my finger and I can even go back and lighten up the shadow with extra water. So this shadowing technique is very forgiving. Don't be afraid, just give it a go. At this point I'm making sure that I don't overdo it with brown as I don't want to turn this into a vintage looking one. And it's time to add my highlights with the white gel pen. This is my jelly roll. I'm going over some of the cutouts and just adding random white lines just because I love the look. 
For my quote for today, I decided to go with Let It Snow as I'm going for a winter themed project. So I used uh, this alphabet die set. I cut out all the letters using the same pattern paper that I used to cut out those leaves. So everything is matching nicely. And then I'm going to glue all those letters together. I have plenty of empty space there, so one other thing that you can do is to just stamp your quote if you like, letter by letter. You can even write down whatever you want, or print it out and stick it down. By the way, to stick all the letters down, I'm using my matte glue, which I absolutely love because when you end up with a little bit of a mess, it dries completely clear, so when you have glue sticking out of the letters, which are so thin, it's not going to show at all. Now, in the pattern paper that I used to cut out the leaves and the letters, there is this adorable little bird, which I think I should use for my journal, so I'm just going to fuzzy cut around it and I'm going to place him on top of the letter W. But before I stick him down, I'm going to do some shading on the letters just to help them pop a little bit more. Again, I'm using the same shading technique. This time I'm using my dye ink, which is the light blue one, the cerulean blue. And I'm going to add a little bit of shading on one side of the letters. It really makes a difference, although it is such a subtle detail. Now I'm going to grab a very thin black marker and I'm going around the letters and add some sketchy lines. Just like I usually outline any strips of quotes, I'm going to do that here. But uh, since I do have some sketchy lines around some of the letters, I'm going to do the same thing and bring the same detail on the cutouts. So I will do that on some of the leaves on the side of the boots, just here and there. It's really important to have the same detail on all the elements on a page to help them come together. Again, the tip of my marker is very, very thin, so it doesn't add tons of uh, black lines there. Just sketchy lines here and there that you can't really tell, but they do make a difference. It's a micro pen. Now, normally this is when I'm calling a page done, however, I had so much fun playing with this one and I just realized that I didn't play with stencils, so that's where I grabbed my stencil with lots of snowflakes and I'm going to add a few here and there. For that I'm using my volume paste and I'm going to add some snowflakes in different areas. This is definitely a step that you can do before you stick all the elements on top and I like to do that because you see here I'm overthinking on where the snowflake should go. If you do that before sticking the elements you feel freedom to add the snowflakes just about anywhere. And that's it for today. Here are some close-up photos where you can see the details better. You can find links to everything I used down below the description as well as on my blog, just like always. Don't forget to like and comment if you enjoyed the video. I hope that you had fun, that you got inspired. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all next time.